So, if I wanted to give your player some skill that has a cooldown, and so the button should be temporarily blocked every time you cast it? Cause this is actually quite easy to do in Godot, and you don't even need to code anything to implement this feature. Now, just before we dive in, did you know that thanks to all of your amazing support, I just released an idle incremental game about stars and constellations called Lightem? It's available on Steam for Windows, Mac and Linux for less than 5 bucks, and it's basically designed to be a chill and relaxed experience to learn more about the 80 plus real constellations, or just invent your own and create a unique night sky. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free demo, add it to your wishlist, share it with your friends, and if you try and enjoy it, you can also leave a review on the games page, this is the best way to help support this project. But anyway, let's say that you have some demo scene, be it a 2D or a 3D scene, and somewhere in your interface you have a button that you want to give a call down to. For example, here I've got this light toggle button control that will toggle my main light on and off. As you can see, it just shows an icon, so I've toggled on the expand icon option to avoid it being forced to its full original size, and then I use the button's custom minimum size parameters to specify the size of my UI element. Then, like any button, I can of course give it some custom styles for its different states. Here I've just created the normal style for now, but you can obviously also create unique styles for the hover, pressed and focus states to properly handle the visuals throughout the button's entire lifecycle. Also, if you're using icons like me, you may need to tell the engine to use mip maps so that they look nice whatever size they're rescaled to. To do that, don't forget to change the texture filter mode on your button, and then select your icon resources in the project, go to the import panel, turn on the generate mip maps option, and hit the reimport button. Oh, and also the last little trick for a really top-notch UI is that if, like I'm doing here, your button has rounded corners, you should go to its visibility section and set its clip mode to clip plus draw. This way, you'll see your button as usual, but whatever node is parented to it will automatically be masked by this button shape, and so it will take your rounded corners into account. Okay, now on to the real cooldown stuff. To implement this system without having to code anything, we can actually rely on a texture progress bar node that we add as a child of our button. And the idea is to set up this texture progress bar node as follows. First, in its progress texture slot, we'll set a super simple and super small fully white texture. Here, it's a 2x2 pixels white image, and this will make our element cover the parent button entirely, but we'll still be able to easily change how filled this cover is since our node is a progress bar. Also, remember to enable the 9 patch stretch option to have our texture expand to the node size properly. Depending on how you want your cooldown visual to look, you can change the fill mode of your texture progress bar node. You see that you can easily have it fill horizontally or vertically from one side to the other, or even be a circular fill in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So once you've picked a fill mode, you can quickly get a fill for your effect by playing around with the value parameter. Basically, it will go from 100 when the cooldown just started to zero when the cooldown ends and your skill is usable again. The other nice thing with this setup is that you can very easily change the color of this cooldown cover by changing the self-modulate property of your texture progress bar node. So just play around with its brightness, its hue and its alpha until you've got something that you like. Next up is making sure that our cover actually blocks our button while the cooldown is active. For that, an easy solution is to use the mouse filter option of our texture progress bar node. In short, if you set it to stop, then this element will block any mouse events, like a click, that happen in this specific area on screen, meaning that your cover node will prevent you from clicking on your button. Okay, so now that everything is ready, let's actually create our cooldown effect. For that, we'll use an animation player node that we can put inside our button, for example, just so that we remember it's related to this specific cooldown button. 
In this animation player node, we'll create a new animation called cooldown, and the idea is that the length of this animation will be the length of our cooldown. So if you want your skill to take 30 seconds to recharge, you'll need to extend this animation to 30 seconds using the input in the top right corner of the animation editor and put your final keys at this time mark. Here, however, I'll stick with the default length, and so my cooldown will be of 1 second. Alright, so first let's select back our texture progress bar node. You'll notice that if you've got the animation editor panel open at the bottom, then every property of this node in the inspector has a little key icon on the right, because you can create a keyframe on this property at the current time in your current animation of the animation player node. Here we're going to start with the mouse filter property. So after making sure that your time playhead is set to zero, click the key icon to mark it as a stop filter when the cooldown animation starts. Godot will ask you if you want to create a reset animation, just click yes, and don't worry, we'll talk more about this reset animation in just a second. For now though, let's create another keyframe on our value property so that it starts at 100. And finally, let's move to the very end of our animation, so here for me it's 1 second, and add two new keyframes on our properties. We'll set the mouse filter to ignore so that it doesn't block mouse events on our button anymore, and we'll set its value to zero so that the cover is completely hidden. And so now you see that if we scrub through our animation, we indeed see our cover unfill slowly as the cooldown runs, until everything is clickable again at the end of the animation, meaning at the end of the cooldown duration. Last but not least, we need to actually trigger this animation when we click on a button. And that's the really cool thing. Thanks to Godot's signal system, we can actually do all of it here, in the editor, without having to code anything. Which means that if you're using a script to give some real game logic to your button, like in my case clicking the main light on and off, you won't need to mess it up with anything related to the cooldown. You'll have your game logic on one side, in the script, and your cooldown logic on the other side, in the editor. Alright, so to do this, just select your button element and go to its signals list. Then double click on the press signal to link a callback to it, and so this signal is the one that is emitted whenever you click on the button. In the new pop-up, select the animation player node in the scene hierarchy, and click on the pick button to choose a method that already exists on this node, and what's important is to make sure that you toggle off both options at the bottom, cause this way you see that you can also get and pick from the node's built-in functions, even if their prototype is not the same as the prototype of the pressed signal, and so in our case, you'll want to get the play method of our animation player node. But of course, this method requires us to tell it which animation to play, and our button's press signal doesn't pass it this parameter. So we need to do it manually by binding an extra input. So after picking the play method in the list, we're going to enable the advanced mode for our signal connection and use the dropdown to add a new extra string parameter that we set to the name of our animation, so here, cooldown. And again, this signal can have multiple callbacks at the same time, so this animation trigger can absolutely live alongside the other callbacks that you define in your button script for the real custom game logic, like here toggling the main light. Now to wrap this up, we just need to fix one little thing, and that's about the reset animation that we quickly mentioned before. In a nutshell, the reset animation is what Godot will play by default when the scene starts to set all the properties modified by the other animations on this animation player node back to some initial value. Except that here, since we created these reset tracks when we were starting our cooldown animation, the initial state of our properties is actually the initial state of the cooldown, meaning that we'll have our mouse filter set to stop and the value of our cover set to 100. In other words, when the game starts, it will be like our cooldown just started, except it's not moving, and we won't ever be able to click on a button. To fix this, we just needed to select our two keyframes and change the values in the inspector to ignore and zero, respectively, to make the cover inactive by default. And well, there we go! 
If you try this out, you see that whenever you click the button, the cooldown starts, with the little animation of the texture progress bar, but also we can't click on a button anymore until the cooldown has finished. And as we said before, you can super easily change how the cooldown cover looks to better match the vibe of your game. But in any case, I really hope that you liked this quick tip. Don't hesitate to react in the comments and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. Go ahead and check out Lightem if you think that you could be interested in that. Leave a review if you like it. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support and to you for watching. And as always, take care.